Hello, this is Discover, and we take customer service very seriously. We know that if you have a question or concern about your credit card, that's a serious matter, and you need to talk to a real person about it. So we offer around-the-clock access to seriously talented representatives in the USA. Again, it's a serious endeavor. The only funny thing about it is Bob. If you call us and Bob answers, you're in for a treat. Get 100% U.S.-based customer service and talk to a real person day or night. Discover exceptionally common sense. Hear that? Is that America cheering or a sausage patty sizzling to perfection? It's time to cheer for Egg McMuffin and fresh cracked eggs at McDonald's. It's time to wake up to the aroma of freshly baked biscuits and treat yourself to a real honest-to-goodness morning meal. Breakfast, it's on at McDonald's. Now get any breakfast sandwich for just two bucks. Available only through the app. Mobile order and pay available at participating McDonald's. McD app download and registration required. Good morning and welcome to the Sports Ethos DFS Today podcast. I am your host, Mike Patria, flying solo on this crazy, hectic, protocoled Saturday. We got six games to talk about. It is December 18th. And that's exactly what it has been. It's just crazy and hectic between last night's slate, tonight's slate, I think future slates. Uh, I think the NBA is doing their best to get everything under control, keep it under control, but the wheels the wheels are falling off, uh, and we are seeing it. It's evident with the value available, with the scores being as high as they are because of that value being available, and just trying to avoid landmines and potholes and the players getting ruled out right before the game starts, players getting reactivated before the next game starts. It's just – it's been a little bit crazy. So uh, we're going to do our best to break this slate down to kind of – Go through, decipher the value, which there is plenty. Uh, and then I guess what plays to spend up on, you know, without having so many options to spend up on it, it, may, it actually makes things a little bit more difficult. You know, you might be leaving a little bit of money on the table uh, and that's okay. And that's perfectly okay because these price tags are not going to be correlating and appropriate for what they should be based on minutes, usage, everything else that we will talk about. So before we jump into anything, though, quick shout out to our presenting sponsor over at Thrive Fantasy, guys. Come prop up on Thrive Fantasy this NBA season. Thrive Fantasy is a daily fantasy sports and esports app for player props. With Thrive, you can eliminate the countless hours of research and focus only on the top tier athletes that have the biggest impact on the game. So choose 10 of 20 available player props to build your lineup. Each prop is assigned a fantasy value for both the over and the under based on how likely it is to hit. Hit the most props, rack up the most points to win a share of the prize pool. It's just that simple. Thrive has over 50000 in guaranteed prizes weekly for the NBA and has awarded over $6 million so far. So head over to Thrive Fantasy. Use that promo code ETHOS when you sign up and you receive a 100% instant first deposit match on up to $100. Download Thrive Fantasy on the App Store or Play Store, or you can visit their website, www.thrivefantasy.com. Sign up with us and prop today. Promo code ETHOS. So, like I said, this is going to be a doozy. There's only a few games where I guess they have some or most of their starting lineup. But we'll start off here with the 7 p.m. Eastern start time. It's the New York Knicks traveling to Boston. Boston on the second half of a back-to-back, taking on the Celtics. So, uh, we do not have an injury report just yet for the Celtics. But as we know, Al Horford is in the health and safety protocols. Looks like Langford left last night's game with a neck injury. And Dennis Schroeder is questionable coming in. He sat out that last game where Langford started for him. So we've got to keep an eye on him as well for the Knicks. R.J. Barrett, Quentin Grimes, Kevin Knox Jr., Emmanuel Quickly, Obi Toppin. They are all in the health and safety protocols. Derrick Rose is questionable. He sprained his right ankle in that last game, left pretty early. So now we have to keep an eye on that as well. We'll start off with this Knicks team. I mean, obviously, we have the money to spend up on Randall. So if you want to do that, I wouldn't fall. It probably won't be the spot I spend up on, despite it being a good matchup. He would be like a pivot spend up for me, and it, I'll, I'll just lay it all out there right now. We have so much forward value available that it just makes more sense for me to spend up on some of these guards, and that's just the way I'm probably going to approach the slate. Now, does Kemba Walker get back into the rotation with all these guards out? Possibly. 
But until we see that news, I think we can go to Miles McBride. He's a he's a solid value play. If you're looking at a guard value, and that's where you want to spend, thirty nine hundred for him. Played thirty six minutes against Houston. Put up forty DraftKings points. Absolutely in play. He's probably one of my favorite value guard plays on this slate. I think he will fly under the radar compared to some of these other forwards that we will talk about. So for me, it's just going to mostly be Randall uh, McBride. I don't mind looking at a guy like Burks, especially because he's going to have to handle the rock as a lot as well. Uh, but he just has him getting it done and now he's all the way up to 7700 and i say all the way up to 7700 but price really doesn't matter on the slate so if you wanted to look that way you absolutely could uh there's just a few other guards that once you get close to that 7700 dollars range that i'd rather spend on either a little less or a little more that we will get to in future games on the boston side of things i think you could go back to the robert williams well in this one he burned a lot of people in that last game he only put up 22.75 dk points he was 4800 so Barely hit value, didn't even really get us, especially on a slate like this. So, you know, you really need players, everybody in your lineup to 7, 8x if you have any hope of cashing. Uh, it was a rough matchup, though, going against the Warriors. We know that they limit centers. They, they, you know, there's not a center that comes in there and has a great game usually. So looking at him in this matchup against his Knicks, it's a much, much better matchup. The big thing that we want to keep an eye on with Robert Williams is the fact that he played 37 minutes. He got the rebounds. He just didn't really get any of the defensive stats, only one block. Only had six shot attempts, which that happens. Robert Williams is an offensive force. So at 5,700, though, I think he makes for a solid pivot. And I, you know, a lot of people will probably bounce off of him after getting burned. And I'm not saying you need to or you don't need to. I just say, you know, anytime you see the ownership's going to creep down for reasons like that, it's a good reason to hop back on sometimes. Outside of him, only other option I'm looking at here is Jason Tatum and Again, forward is stacked, but if you have the money, maybe in your utility, maybe in one of your forward spots, you want to go to like McBride or one of these other guards that we'll get to uh, as one of your value plays instead of the forward spot. And you can easily do that. But I will look at Tatum simply out of necessity because raw points are going to matter from your spend ups on this one. And he's a guy that could easily do it with Jalen Brown being on the second half of a back to back. We have to mo monitor his minutes if he even plays. We, we have no idea. So we got to keep an eye on that whole situation. And if he sits, it would only make Tatum a much better play. On to the next game, and this is where you need to buckle up. Orlando Magic traveling to Brooklyn, taking on the Nets. This injury report is as long as the CVS receipt. The so Marcus Aldridge, DeAndre Bembry, Bruce Brown, Javon Carter, Kevin Durant, James Harden, Joe Harris, Kyrie Irving, James Johnson, Paul Millsap. All of them ruled out. Nicholas Claxton's questionable. Patty Mills was ruled out for rest, uh, but right before jumping on air, we saw that he will be available. For the Magic, Cole Anthony is questionable, but Mo Bamba has been ruled out. Ignas has been ruled out. Michael Carter-Williams, Markel Fultz, RJ Hampton, Jonathan Isaac, Terrence Ross, Jalen Suggs, Etwan Moore, Maurice Wagner. All ruled out. Wendell Carter Jr. is doubtful. He's not going to play. Uh, hopefully he can get back. It says uh, right lower leg. It was a muscle strain is what they're saying, but he had to be wheeled out of the arena, wheeled off the court. He had his head down in the towel. Looks like he was emotional. It looked like a rough injury. Uh, I wouldn't expect to have Wendell Carter Jr. back anytime soon. Just, you know, hopes up to that he could recover and get back on the court as soon as possible. But that injury did not look good. And listen, there's going to be plenty to go to here. This is probably one of the most game stackable games out there. It's just it's going to be back and forth between second units for the most part. We'll start off here with the Magic. And there are plenty of options. Okiki absolutely gave us the return that we were looking for in that last one. Put up 53 and a half DK points. Uh, he's going to have to be relied upon even more. He played 39 minutes in that last game. He should be looking at a similar workload in this one. Only 12 shot attempts, which, you know, we say only, but with everybody out, that may that may take up even a little bit more in this one. Uh, he has a decent chance of getting a double-double. I wouldn't expect six steals again. It's gifting season. No one returns alcohol. So this year, get everyone on your list the gift of beer, wine, and spirits delivered with Drizzly. In under 60 minutes. Right now, Drizzly is giving every new customer $5 off their first order. Just use the promo code FAST5 at checkout. So download Drizzly app now or go to drizzly.com. That's D R I Z L Y.com and use the promo code FAST5 for $5 off your first order. And get that delivered in under 60 minutes. Get it when you need it. 
You can also conveniently shop across stores. So you can choose from a huge selection and get exactly what you want. And you have the benefit to, of finding out the best deals on what you're looking for, as you can compare prices across those multiple stores. Drizzly is the most convenient way to buy beer, wine, and spirits with delivery to your doorstep in under 60 minutes. Drizzly is the number one app for alcohol delivery. So download the Drizzly app now or go to drizzly.com. Again, that's D-R-I-Z-L-Y.com and use the promo code FAST5 at checkout to get $5 off your first order. It's not too late to make someone's holiday season a special one. Start now as an Amazon delivery station warehouse associate to earn some extra money for the holidays. You'd help bring joy to thousands near you by preparing packages and loading them up for their final delivery. With night and early morning shifts available through the new year, you'd also have the flexibility to spend time with your loved ones. To start as a delivery station associate, go to Amazon.com slash holiday work. Amazon is a proud equal opportunity employer. But at 3,800, he's a fantastic value play. Once again, we can go right back to the well on this one. With so much value available, it might make sense in your GPPs or if you're building more lineups to maybe, I'm not saying fade them uh, all over the place, but if you're building multiple lineups, have a you know one or two, maybe even a little bit more depending on how many you're building, without Okiki simply because he's going to draw heavy ownership. And if with all the value, it wouldn't shock me if there's four or five value plays that outscore him. And that's easily possible. We've seen plenty of times where Okiki struggles with his shot, and if he doesn't get the steals numbers up there, and he finishes with like 25 DK points, that's not going to get it done with all the value. Uh, there's going to be some guys that easily get 30 to 40. And for that reason, it could make a little bit of sense to, you know, warrant the fade, I guess. But I'll still have shares. I just won't be going as headstrong as I did last night. Uh, other options we could consider, Gary Harris at 4,300. One of the lone guards available for this team put up 35.25 DK points. 14 shots, hit, hit him at a 50% clip, ended up finishing with 25-1, and one, chipped in a couple stocks. Uh, he's a solid play at 4,300. I don't know if I'll go right back to that well. Again, one of these guards that we could consider for value if you don't want to spend up on the other ones and you want to get a Tatum or a Randall. So it's really going to depend on your build. And right now, my initial build, I have him in one of about five lineups. I'll end up probably maxing out that 20-entry max tonight because it seems like a fun night to do that as I continue to build throughout the day. Uh, but he is in play. And then the other guy I really want to, two other guys I really want to focus on, uh, Franz Wagner at 6,700, who probably go down as one of my favorite plays on the slate. Put up 42 DK points that last one. Most importantly, he took 23 shot attempts. And this dude has been one of the most consistent rookies this year so far. The usage will get funneled his way. He could find himself playing three different positions between shooting guard, small forward, power forward. I have a ton of interest in Franz. I think everyone's going to kind of go through the magic for this value, but don't keep, you know, don't forget uh, this guy can easily drop 30 real life points and it would not shock me, especially in this matchup going against a battered and bruised Nets team. So Franz in play. And then the value is Robin Lopez at the center position, 3,300. Never do I ever feel comfortable about playing Robin Lopez, but with no centers available outside of Robin Lopez, yeah, we could we could feel a little bit more confident. When the guy plays 30 plus minutes, he usually banks in at least 25 to 30 DK points. Not the highest point per minute producer, uh, but I, I gotta anticipate that this guy's gonna play heavy minutes. And again, probably overall better value plays, but probably also the best value at the center position. So depending on how you build and the way you want to go with this, Robin Lopez is most certainly in play. On the net side of the ball, buckle up because there are a lot of options in this game as well. I think we'll start at the two top. Uh, Patty Mills, 7K. I'm playing him, no doubt about it. The usage will be there for him. He's probably going to lead the team in shot attempts. Uh, he's going to continue to chuck. At 7K, I don't care about the price tag. I told you we have so much money to spend on this slate where you can go this way pretty easily and still feel confident. Uh, and then Blake Griffin at 5,200. Claxton is questionable coming into this one. And if Claxton sits, Blake might be the only center available. Despite being the only center available, he's still a great play, even if Claxton plays. Took 16 shot attempts in that last one. Only knocked down one of his five threes taken. But the rebounds, the points, everything is there for him. And with no Durant, the usage is going to skyrocket for him and Patty. And probably one or two other options on this team as far as value that ancillary plays. Uh, I'm probably leaning more Kessler Edwards just because we've seen the consistent role for him when it comes to the minutes, when it comes to the shot attempts. He's a rock solid player at 4,800. And I think Cam Thompson at 47, Cam Thomas at 4,700. 
Uh, only took six shot attempts. He's been actually very quiet with all these the injuries and everything going on. But I anticipate he eventually starts to heat up, especially with Kevin Durant watching alongside. Him and Durant have kind of made a uh, big brother bond. And Cam Thomas loves to kind of show off in front of him. They always play one-on-one in practice. I'm expecting high shot attempts from him. And if you wanted to go back to the David uh, Duke Jr., well, I wouldn't fault you there either. Dude's still playing heavy minutes. Uh, didn't have the shot attempts. Didn't have the defensive stats and the rebounds that he had in that first game. So he offers a little bit more risk, but people probably likely hop off of him and go to these other options. So he makes for a rock solid GPP play. I'll probably draw the line with those four guys. And now I'm not playing all four of those guys and running it back with four magic. Uh, I'm going to spread it out, but that's why we build sometimes multiple lineups. You got to make the what bet fits best for your build. And you could probably base that off of who you want to spend up on. Normally we're sitting there, and, you know, we're building around our value. Uh, it's probably going to be built around who you want to spend up on on this slate, just simply because raw points are going to matter with those spend ups and there's value at pretty much every single position. All right. We'll keep it moving. 730 Eastern Standard Time game. Golden State Warriors traveling to Toronto. They are taking on the Raptors. Uh, Golden State on the second half of a back to back. No injury report, but we know that they're sitting pretty much uh, their entire starting lineup. And for the Raptors, Precious is questionable. OG is questionable. Ken Birch is questionable. Uh, and Dragic is not with the team yet. But for Golden State, like I said, Draymond resting, Curry resting, Wiggins resting, Poole and protocols, Clay Thompson's targeting January, Otto Porter's resting, James Wiseman's still out, Andre Iguodala is still resting. So we have a lot of options to look at here, again, at that forward position, at the guard position here. Juan Toscano Anderson most likely going to draw the start at 3,200, absolutely in play. Gary Payton Jr., most likely going to draw the start at point guard, absolutely in play. The Manja Bielitsa probably come off the bench. He'll still probably see around 25 to 30 minutes. Absolutely in play. He's probably more of the GPP pivot. Uh, while Chris Chios is like the pivot off of Peyton. But there's a decent chance that both those guys end up starting. Uh, the, eh, no, they'll probably start Moody again. Uh, Moody at minimum salary. He's in play as well just because the minutes will be there most likely for him. They weren't in that last game. He only played 10 minutes. But... Those are the value plays you're looking at, and it's you know you could sprinkle in the value. If I had to pick the two most confident ones, it would probably be Gary Payton. It would probably want Toscano Anderson, uh, but I, I believe he was really close for me right there too. I think all three of those guys are fantastic plays. Damian Lee should even get good run as well. I mean, the, it, we got to wait almost to see on what the starting lineup looks like, but we should know that I would say Lee, Payton, Toscano Anderson are all probably going to start and play heavy minutes. On the other side of the ball. This is where we're probably going to look for some of our spend-ups. I mean, Fred Van Vliet is coming in at 9K. He's guard, point guard, shooting guard eligibility. I don't love the price tag for Van Vliet, but I have the money to spend, and I don't love this guard position for the value as much. Like, I, I think Gary Payton is an absolutely great player. If he's a value player on any other slate, I'd probably have heavy ownership. Um, but with some of these other four, like, I don't know if he has that ups. He has the upside. We've seen 40-point games out of him. But he's not an offensive-minded player. You're really relying on the assists, the rebounds, the steals, a lot of the ancillary stats to get him where he is. So I think he's probably one of the guards uh, or one of the value plays I would have lower ownership on. But for that, he's still an excellent defender. And if you wanted to spend up on someone outside of Van Vliet, because that's probably who's going to be guarding. For most of the games, he's going to be up in his grill. So but I'm still going to be playing Van Vliet at 9K. Uh, a guy that could routinely jump out 40 to 50 DK points. Raw points are going to matter. I love Van Fleet on this slate as well. Uh, outside of him, we got to keep an eye on OG, Precious, Birch. And who's going to be available? I mean, Boucher is probably off the table for me. Better value available for cheaper. Uh, I think Scotty Barnes, Siakam, both those guys are certainly in play. If you didn't want to spend up on Van Fleet or if you wanted to just kind of get like a little mini game stack in this game, you could do that as well. You can run it back with two of these expensive guys on Toronto and maybe throw in one or two of the value plays on the other side, get a little mini game stack, combine that with the Orlando Brooklyn, maybe throw in a piece from the Milwaukee game. There's a lot of ways you could approach this slate, but I would say Barnes, Siakam, and uh, uh, Van Vliet are the only Raptors I'm really looking at. And I know it's all the top options, but we have the money to spend, and that's why I'm looking at them. On to the next game, Los Angeles Clippers traveling to OKC. They are taking on the Thunder. Uh, we'll check out the injury report for this one. As of right now, the Clippers have Nicholas Batum, Paul George, both questionable. Serge Ibaka is out for personal reasons. Uh, we know Kawhi Leonard nowhere near returning. For OKC, Lou Jenstor is questionable. Ty Jerome has been ruled out with Trey Mann, Paku Vesky, and Aaron Wiggins is in the G League. I uh, don't know if they'll be able to call him up before the game, but that kind of has me thinking maybe Dort is more 
probable than questionable if they keep him down in the G League. Uh, as far as a game total for this one, it is a 208 and a half with the Clippers being favored by four. And I guess I didn't mention the first two, and I do apologize. Uh, Golden State's game versus Toronto was 212.5, Toronto favored by 7.5, and, and the Orlando-Brooklyn game was 215.5, with Brooklyn being favored by 1.5. So we'll look over on this Clipper team. Uh, if Paul George plays, certainly in play. He's probably going to be one of the top spend-ups, especially at that guard position. I would prefer him over Van Vliet ever so slightly if we know that he's playing. Uh, if he sits... We can look back at the well with Reggie Jackson, but I just prefer some of these other guards that we've already talked about, like Patty Mills um, or another guy that we'll get to later on over him. And then Marcus Morris, Luke Kennard, both these guys are in play. But I think there's if you're finding yourself in that mid-tier range, there's probably safer options you can look at, especially when it comes to Kennard. He's a little up and down. Marcus Morris has shown a little bit of consistency over the past weeks or two, uh, a few weeks. But I would try to find the extra money for like a Franz Wagner. Uh, he's again in play, but not one of my favorite plays. Keeping him in the player pool. On to the OKC side of the ball, looking at Shea Gilders Alexander. I prefer Van Vliet over him, but if we see that there's no Paul George, I'll like Shea a lot more. Uh, he becomes a little bit of a pivot off of him. So you could certainly look that way. I think both those guys are excellent spend ups. When we know that Shea is playing in a close game and the minutes stay close and everything else is great, uh, he absolutely crushes. And there's only a four point spread in this one. So has me leaning a little bit towards shape being available in my player pool. Somebody I normally probably wouldn't target too much at 8,900. But again, money doesn't matter. Spending up at the guard position is the way I want to do it. So I'll be mixing and matching all throughout the guards all night long between Van Vliet, between Shea. Uh, we'll get to Drew Holiday. We'll, you know, Patty Mills can be lumped in there. He's a little cheaper than those guys. But I think spending up at guard is the way to do it tonight. Again, don't feel too confident. and uh, I mean, I'm confident that these guards, these cheap guards, will hit their price tag. But it's not just hitting their price tag that's going to matter. It's going to be blowing it out of the water by 7 or 8x. Outside of him, if we see that Dort's back out, I think we can go to that Ken Rich Williams well at 3,800. Another rock-solid value play. Had a ton of them in that last one. Low-owned. Put up 35.5 DK points. And that was with Wiggins starting. If Wiggins is still in the G League and doesn't end up being called back up for this game, well then, boom, probably starts. And becomes a fantastic play. Now, if he doesn't start and he's coming off the bench and only playing 26 minutes, I think there's better value available. He could easily be that low owned GPP play. Keep him in your player pool for that reason. It's just, you know, less confident as some of these other options that we have. On to the next game Washington traveling to Utah, taking on the Jazz in this one for the injury report. Uh, Jazz on the second half of a back to back, they've yet to submit it, but we saw that Donovan Mitchell was dealing with, uh, I believe it was a stomach bug. So he's probably going to be questionable for this one for the Wizards. Uh, everybody's good to go outside of Rui, Thomas Bryant, uh, for the game total for the spread. It looks like the Jazz are going to be favored by 10 and a half for the 220 and a half game total. So this will have one of the higher game totals of the night, but also one of the larger spreads of the night. Not a lot of interest in this game. Bottom line, I'm not paying 9,600 for Beal. Um, I think there's better options at the forward position outside of Kuzma in a tough matchup. I don't generally want to target too many centers going against Gobert, so that takes both those guys pretty much off the board for me. So I'm probably okay here with just kind of completely fading Washington. And you could look at Utah. Mitchell sits, I'd feel a lot more comfortable about this game staying close. But it's going to be probably a romp stomp. I mean, Mitchell's a fantastic play if he plays, but dealing with the stomach virus, that's what they're saying it is, not necessarily a stomach bug. It's a virus. So he's in play as one of those spend up on guards. I don't think I'll be going to Rudy Gobert at 8,800, despite this being you know a great matchup for him. Just don't see the need to spend up that much on center when I want to spend up on the guard position. So if Mitchell plays, he's good to go, completely healthy. Yeah, sure, we can lump him in there with Van Vliet, with Shea, uh, and Holiday. You know, I, I'm going to have three of the expensive guards pretty much in uh, most of my lineups. I'll do a few pivots in my multi-GPP builds. But for the most part, I'm going to be rolling with a lot of these spend-ups on guards. Final game of the night before we head over there. Shout out to Manscaped, guys. Head over to Manscaped.com. Look at that perfect package 4.0 kit. Use that promo code HOOPBALL20. You get 20% off plus free shipping. Absolute best gift for any of your male friends. Uh, You know, father, brother, friend, yourself. Uh, It makes sense for everybody. You get the Lawnmower 4.0, the newly improved Lawnmower 4.0. You can even get the additional ear nose and hair trimmer it's not coming in the kit but throw it in there you'll love it it's a fantastic fantastic product but the kit also comes with the boxer briefs it comes with the wonderful travel kit the bombs the conditioners the toners uh body wash you get a little bit of everything you need 
uh, for your holiday traveling in that perfect package 4.0 kit. So head over to Manscaped. Use that promo code HOOPBALL20. Final game of the night, Cleveland traveling to Milwaukee, taking on the Bucks. Right now, it uh, looks like Bucks are on the second half of back-to-back, so no injury report for the Cavs. Mobley is questionable. He set out that last game. Isaac Okoro is in the health and safety protocols. Colin Sexton remains out for the season. Let's check and see if we have a game total. We do. It's 214, Milwaukee being favored by one point, which feels a little shocking. I think that uh, Cleveland might even be able to take this game. So off here with the Cleveland side of the ball, a lot to like, uh, just because this is going to be probably one of the better actual basketball games of the night. I think Darius Garland, Jared Allen, both these guys are in play. I'm not going to be going to too much value. With the Coro out, we could end up seeing a decent amount of Lamar Stevens, but I think there's better value available out there that we don't need to really consider him. So I'm really just considering the spend-ups. It actually could even be Ricky Rubio that ends up drawing the start. Now, if Rubio draws the start, that's a different story. Um, at 5,200, I think he's a fantastic play, but I want to see him starting, and that's what it's going to take for me. But if comes off the bench, I'll probably avoid him. Uh, but Garland, Allen, and Rubio, if he starts, I think are absolutely fantastic plays in this spot. Probably have less shares of Garland just because I like some of these other guards a little bit more, especially the guy on the other side of the ball for only $100 less. On the Milwaukee side of things, yeah, Drew Holiday coming off of a monster game. Dude took 36 shot attempts with these guys out, put up 40 actual points. 8,200, he's going to be chalky. I'm okay with eating it. I want to spend up on this on the guards. He's probably the top guy to go with. Uh, Middleton sat out of that last one. He's probably going to be questionable coming into this one. He was actually, I believe it was almost probable when uh, earlier in the day, and then they ruled him out last minute maybe because it is a back-to-back. So keep an eye on that. If Middleton plays, obviously we, we can't expect 36 shot attempts again from Holiday, but he'll still have tons of usage, tons of minutes, everything you want to see from a guy that you're spending up on. So, yes, I absolutely love me some Holiday. Other guy we want to look at for some value would be Jordan Nwora. Dude continues just to be a point-per-minute stud whenever he's playing. Uh, give him big minutes. He's going to give you a big return. At 3,600, it's not the best matchup going against this double big lineup if Mobley plays. Nonetheless, I will have some shares of him. He's playing big minutes. He's you know, never shy when it comes to shooting. He has 14 and 15 shot attempts over the last two games. The rebounds tend to come in there. Uh, he's a monster when it comes to playing the passing lane. Gets plenty of steals when he gets in the minutes. So I have some interest in Nawara with Bobby Portis out, with Giannis out. He's going to continue to play a big run. Probably two of my favorite plays on the slate. Uh, I mean, on the, in this game. I mean, on the slate as well. I'm going to have plenty of them. DeMarcus Cousins just didn't play the minutes that we wanted to see from him. He picked up two early fouls in the game, and it just doesn't seem like they're overly committing to playing in big minutes. So uh, he's in play at 3,800. Don't get me wrong, but I'll probably end up going elsewhere, just not not the minutes and the workload that I want to see. With all the value available, I got better spots. And then I don't mind if you want to take shots on guys like Connaughton and Grayson Allen. Both these guys are playing big minutes. They're both taking plenty of shot attempts, so they're in play. They'll probably end up going lower owned with all this value available, so they make for great GPP pivots. So it's really going to be Holiday, Connaughton, Grayson Allen, and then Jordan Nwora for me. If Middleton plays, I probably won't have too many shares of him, uh, but I'd probably lower my shares on Connaughton and Allen ever so slightly if he does play. It's pretty much the entire slate. Tried to run through it. Uh, tried to hit every point that I wanted to hit, hit the value, hit everybody available for value so that way you guys can decipher which ones you like. But we're going to get to our player tier segment right now where I'll break down my favorite plays uh, as the morning. This is, this is an early look. The podcast is at about 10 a.m. Uh, Central Time. I'm recording this 11 p.m. Eastern. So there's going to be things that change. It's going to give you guys that get ruled in and ruled out. But we'll start at the expensive tier. Uh, as of right now, I think Drew Holiday, 8,200. Probably one of my top options I'm looking to spend up on. And I don't mind pairing that with some Freddie Van Vliet at 9K. I told you, spending up on these guards could have gone either way. Um, anybody, and now for the mid-tier, Patty Mills, 7K. And then we'll pair that with some Franz Wagner at 6,700. I think both those guys are rock style Mid-tier plays. Could even throw Blake Griffin in there if you want as well. But I'd like him a lot more if Claxton's out. Still in play regardless. And then for the value. And this is probably where everybody's like, well, everybody. Yeah, it's pretty much everybody. Uh, I talked about so many good value plays over here that we could consider. Uh, there's plenty of options that you could look at. Uh, as of right now, I think Jordan Nwora at 3,600 is an excellent play. Uh, just continues to play big minutes, continues to get decent usage, and has so much upside for a guy at 3,600. Absolutely like him. Uh, and then this is where it gets tricky is that second one because I don't want you guys to think, you know, you have to play both of these. There's so much value. It's hard to make the decision on this slate. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to, you know, put an emphasis on is that there's a lot of value available. So I could say Okiki at 3,800. 
Uh, it could be Juan Toscano Anderson. I, I would probably, it, you could even throw Robin Lopez in there. I would say those are the next guys. I gave a bunch of them because those are the next ones I'm leading towards the most. Obviously, I don't want you to forget about some of those Brooklyn players, but some of them are getting a little bit more priced up, but money's not really an option. So depending on how you want to go at this slate and how you want to approach it and your build is what's going to matter the most. But that's all I have for you guys. As always, you can find me on Twitter at Mike Apatria, M-I-K-E-A-P-O-T-R-I-A. I will be in that Discord an hour before lock, answering as many questions, letting you guys know how my builds are looking, who I'm playing the most of, uh, who I'm probably fading as well, because you're going to have to fade some of these options. And then, as always, give us a thumbs up, five-star rate and review wherever you are listening to this. Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Podbean, doesn't matter. We're everywhere. YouTube. Five stars, thumbs up. Greatly appreciate that over there, guys. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. We'll be Santino taking down that nice Sunday slate for you guys, solo style. And as always, reach out. Go crush some GPPs. Take care, guys. It's not too late to make someone's holiday season a special one. Start now as an Amazon delivery station warehouse associate to earn some extra money for the holidays. You'd help bring joy to thousands near you by preparing packages and loading them up for their final delivery. With night and early morning shifts available through the new year, you'd also have the flexibility to spend time with your loved ones. To start as a delivery station associate, go to amazon.com slash holiday work. Amazon is a proud equal opportunity employer. Hear that? Is that America cheering or a sausage patty sizzling to perfection? It's time to cheer for Egg McMuffin and fresh cracked eggs at McDonald's. It's time to wake up to the aroma of freshly baked biscuits and treat yourself to a real honest-to-goodness morning meal. Breakfast, it's on at McDonald's. Now get any breakfast sandwich for just 2 bucks. Available only through the app. Mobile order and pay available at participating McDonald's. McD app download and registration required.